I'll call this meeting to order. Good evening. Welcome to the City of Montpelier Development Review Board. My name is Daniel Richardson. I serve as chair for this meeting uh, Monday, September 16th, 2019. The other members from my right are Rob Goodwin, Michael Lazorchak, Meredith Crandall, staff, Kate McCarthy, Ryan Kane, Claire Rock. All right. The first order of business is approval of the agenda. Uh, we have one application before us tonight. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Hearing none, I will accept a motion to accept the agenda as drafted. So moved. Motion by Ryan. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Rob. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. We have an agenda. <coughs> there are no comments from the chair this evening. Uh, and the next item of business is the Minutes from September 3rd, myself, Kate, Rob, Michael, uh, we're in one, two, three, four. We have just enough to approve the minutes. Do I have any additions, changes to the minutes? If not, I'll take a motion to accept the minutes of September 3rd. Motion to approve the minutes as drafted. Okay, motion by Rob, do I have a second? Second. Second by Kate. All those in favor, please raise your right hand that are eligible to vote. And we have minutes for September the 3rd. Very exciting. First item of business is, and only item of business, is 260 Elm Street. If the applicant will step forward to the table. Hi. I'd say just make sure you pull the microphone close and speak pretty, pretty, pretty closely into it. So, the way in which we do this, I'll have you introduce yourself, and then I'll put you under oath, and then um, I think it would be helpful in this particular situation for Meredith to start off, because you're here for a very particular reason, and she can help frame it, and then I'll turn the floor over to you to add any additional information that you think we should consider during our review. Okay? So if you'll state your, state your name for the record. Sure. Thank you. And you're the owner of this property at. Uh, I'm not Tuesday. the owner. Oh, oh, you're just the landscape. I'm the I'm the landscape designer for okay. the project. Yeah. All right. Uh, if you'll raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the evidence you're about to give for the matter under consideration shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under pains and penalties of perjury? I do. Right. So, Meredith, you want to tee this up? Yeah. So. The reason this is before the DRB is because the applicant wants to put up a six foot high fence along the Elm Street frontage. Um, there is, typically fences would just be an administrative approval, especially for a single family home, but the general allowance for front yard fences is only four and a half feet. Um, so they need to ask for a waiver. The extra complication is that the way I interpret the waiver provision, um, fence heights are allowed no more than a 10% waiver, which here would, out of four and a half feet, would bring you up to five feet, roughly. Um, and they're asking for a six foot. So in addition to the a waiver that has to go to the DRB, You've also got the asking for a waiver greater than what is supposed to be allowed. We've run into this before, but not with fences. So it's just it's something to pick through the particulars of. Okay. And so my understanding is also this is covered by um, this in specific uh, the bylaw concerning fence heights. Right. So you have right. So you have the height waiver maximums in um, 3002, right, is that the one? Yeah. But then you also have the fences and walls provision in section 3101D. Mm -hmm. And that's that's where we start, where we're talking yeah. about the front yard, mm -hmm. fences or walls located within a front yard shall not exceed a height of four Microphone's on the other side of you. I know. <laughs> 
I thought I was projecting. Is that <laughs> you picking it up, Rob? It, it, it's helping now. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. You got to just lean the other way. I understand. We're not only performing for ourselves, but for the greater audience of Montpelier. Um, so, the 3101D mm -hmm. says front yard and says fences or walls located within a front yard shall not exceed a height of four and a half feet and the applicant shall demonstrate that the fence will not interfere with line of sight or of pedestrians, bicycles, or vehicles in the right of way. Right. And then um, there is a definition as well. Of yeah. Sorry, I was, I was teeing it up and summarizing yeah. not getting into No, no, I understand. Okay. I just want to, I'm not going to read that definition, but I just want us to sort of start from all the same okay. chapter and verse. So, um, you know, before we get to the, and I'll get to some of the nuance in a second. So, uh, if you want to add to that at this point as to, uh, and in particular, I think it would be helpful to understand what are the, what are the issues driving this need for a, a waiver um, and a heightened fence? Um, sure. What are the contours of the project? Yeah. So. Uh, when I first started working with Weston Allison, it was back in 2017. So that's a long project, but um, that's partially my fault as a designer. I do try to slow people down when it comes to landscapes. Um, but so at that time, they were still, West had a pretty good idea of what the building renovations were going to be at that point, but um, he wanted more information on how that relates to the landscape. And so the first time I met with him was in October of 2017. And um, I go through site analysis as part of um, what I do when coming up with designs. And because of the transition between a public space and a private space, um, sight lines were really important. And so um, we looked at that time, the hedge for the Meadow Mart was still fully functional. Um, the deer have now since eaten it. But uh, <laughs> the, on the Vine Street or on the Elm Street side, there was an invasive hedge and then kind of just shrub plants. And so we knew we had to address that. Um, but we looked a lot at the sight lines. So coming from Birch Grove was the main driving force behind a fence. Actually, West wanted to put in a vegetative hedge, and I talked him out of it, um, and went instead with the with a fence so that he could have year-round um, just that little buffer, not just from uh, sight lines, but also we looked at uh, noise and then also uh, dust, believe it or not. Um, so I, I looked at the dust line in the spring. Um, and inches do make a difference. That's, I think, why we're here, why Wes, Allison, and myself felt it was important to get the extra inches. Because for the sight lines, people sitting at Birch Grove, looking into the property, um, for solar gain, they wanted to put a sunroom on that one side, on, on the southwest. Uh, it used to be a porch, and now it'll be a sunroom. And that's a great spot. I mean, it's got great solar gain. It makes sense. But unfortunately, it's in direct view when you take down all the vegetation for the people at Birch Grove who are sitting having coffee to look in. And so we talked about options. We looked at them all. And it's not um, just a privacy fence. The top 12 inches would be lattice. Um, something else we talked about were interrupted views. So they have a, um, in the design, it was to have a gate. And that is you know across from nothing where people would be sitting looking right in. That's a movement area. But where there is sitting and looking, staring, <laughs> is uh, from Birch Grove. And so that's where the fence, um, six feet really made sense, even with having the lattice in the top part. So that was kind of the main driver of that. Uh, softening the fence, too. They didn't, if, if you see on the Vine Street side, they have a four-foot picket fence. So it's not about closing themselves off at all. It was about controlling views into the property, as well as controlling views out. But um, having uh, softening the fence by pulling it back the 30 inches from the sidewalk so that um, perennials can grow in vines, but then also um, softening the top part. So the, already in the design were to have trellises abutting the fence um, as part of the fence. 
Um, and that was so that it wasn't just this, you know, really stark looking built thing, that it was really kind of part of it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it sounds as if there's a number of issues that are driving this need for this fence privacy, sight lines, dust, um, noise mm -hmm. control. Um, yeah. And can you explain from a noise perspective, is the extra, you know, assuming for a moment this is the front yard and assuming for a moment four and a half feet yeah. is what we're working off of, mm -hmm. to what extent is are these additional, you know, three and a half feet necessary mm -hmm. for noise purposes for, or to prevent noise from entering? Yeah. Oh, one and a half feet. One and a half feet. Well, sorry, one and a half yeah. feet. Um, and Here's where this is out of my expertise range, but I do know, so most noise is generated actually from tires. Mm -hmm. So it's truly the, the bottom 20 inches. If any of you are having problems with noise, you need to block the tires of anything. But that corridor of Elm Street, noise bounces off buildings. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I haven't done a noise analysis, but I know whatever you're getting up above that, you're helping to just soften it. And, and the main, one of the main purposes of the fence, too, is to hold greenery in the growing season. But when everything's dying back, that's when noise can really, it's in the stick seasons. It's the mud season, fall, when things are dying back, but people aren't inside with closed windows yet. Mm -hmm. And that's what the fence really serves that purpose. Okay. Yeah. And it's just extra inches, so I think... Um, I couldn't tell you how much noise it's going to help, but I know it'll soften it just a little bit more. And the Vine Street side, I mean, you can see they're not even worried about that because people are slowing to a stop. Right. It's that if there's no one in the pedestrian cross crosswalk, people are going 25 miles an hour, sometimes more. So you mentioned before that this porch on the Elm Street side is now being closed in. Right. So will there be an entrance or exit off of that porch or? Yes. Okay. Yeah, there will be a door on that side and then it leads to a gate. And this, the Elm Street side is considered their secondary entrance. You, you just reminded me of another point. So um, to give the landscape cue that that isn't their primary entrance, they wanted it to be a little less welcoming than the Vine Street side. That's why the Vine Street side has lower fencing and the picket fence so that it's it's much more welcoming. It's like, come in. Whereas they want, you know, just people that really aren't familiar with them that wouldn't know. Right. That's all of New England. I never know which door to go to. I don't know if you guys feel that way. It's like, what, what door do I go to? <laughs> so we're trying to make it a little bit more obvious. Okay. And so, and the Vine Street side is where their garage is, where their cars mm -hmm. will be coming in and out. Right. where the front door is going to be right, the, the main for, entrance. for main the main entrance of the house yeah, that's true okay but it's still open on the on the elm street side and the design had an arbor going over that but it's a little less open than the vine street side right but i'm trying to i, I just want to make and i think you've made it clear is just that mm. you know this is going from a front porch yeah to a sunroom and a side entrance that by design and intent will be a private side entrance yes as opposed to the primary frontage right facing the street which is the historically at least the way this house is situated there yeah. is a good argument that visitors strangers male people friends would have used this front porch entrance Mm. as they do on any of these other houses up and down Elm Street because yeah. that's the front facing and they're shifting the owners are shifting this so that now mm. the door on Elm on Vine Street becomes the primary entrance and all queues will lead to the Vine Street to side. the Vine Street side true I'd have a little pushback on it in that many of the houses are renting or are, are have tenants and so entrances I've noticed on a lot of the buildings are really different or have additional entrances that I wouldn't say are traditional. Sure. I mean, obviously, when you deal with rental properties. Rental. Yeah. But, but when you look at the, you know, I, and that's a fair point. I'm not. Yeah. 
And this used to be a rental. Allison lived in it for, she's one of the owners, Allison and West. Um, she rented for, I think, four or five years before buying it. Um, and she never used the front, the Elm Street side. It was always the Fine Street side. So we kind of kept with that. Okay. So yeah. go ahead. This, this is a really interesting, really interesting discussion about the role of different entrances. And I, oh, yeah. I, I'm actually interested. <laughs> even, even though sometimes those front formalized entrances don't get used, they still have a role to play in terms of, mm. the, of the cohesiveness of the street. And... Um, that's true. Sort of the way the houses side by side mm -hmm. along that street interact with each other and create the neighborhood character. Yeah. So I, as I've looked at this house, and I walk by it pretty frequently because of where I live, um, it really is oriented to Elm Street. Its mm -hmm. address is Elm Street. So one thing to think about is as we consider how this does or doesn't change the character Mm. is the way it changes the changes the relationship with the street even though functionally the yeah. front entrance the new the primary entrance will be mm -hmm. off of vine street um, and all of the functionality that you've described is extremely thoughtful um, mm. but as far as it's con within the overall context mm. what would this decision do to yeah. to yeah. that relation and, and going back to to in recent years it had a six to 15 foot invasive hedge. Um, Allison told me a story just last week that it used to be called the witch's house when she rented there. I don't know if any of you, I mean, I lived in the meadow, I didn't know it was called the witch's house, but it's because it had a, a pretty, you know, um, what's the word? It's, it's, it, uh, it just, it kept people kind of having that, having that feeling when you walk past it and it's unkempt and overgrown of, Halloween, don't go in there. Mm -hmm. It's a gothic style house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but so I think it was never welcoming as on the Elm Street side. Right. And consciously through this design of a fence that has an interrupted lattice view for all walkers to be able to see in, and then a welcoming gate, that it is actually more welcoming than what it was the past te decade, I would think. But I do, I do fully understand keeping the character. It's a, it's a historic home. You know, a, a six foot high fence wouldn't have been there when this house was built. That wouldn't have been in character with the times. Um, but I do think one other quick point is um, Allison and West are really conscientious people and uh, very much concerned with how people are feeling about their property. And I think when we took down the invasive hedge, they were really concerned that people, and people were, like, what are you doing? You're removing vegetation. <laughs> and so they made sure that I was on site and my husband, Alex, who's working on the property, were on site when that happened to explain to people, um, just to educate that this actually was a really bad hedge. It's invasive. It's not something you should plant. But so, and that came from Allison, that she really wanted to make sure people weren't worried. <laughs> I think just as far as the like front, which is the front entrance, which is the front yard, is not really the the, the definition is actually defined that uh, right. that on corner lots uh, where you front on both streets, you have yeah. two front yards. So regardless of which is the primary entrance or which was historically the primary entrance, I think the regulations are pretty clear that mm -hmm. the front yard specific regulations apply both to Vine and Elm Street. I agree. So, I agree. Yeah. I guess my, my remarks were more about uh, the character evaluation sure. than where the different heights applied, but that's a good clarification given that this is a corner lot and has that special mm -hmm. definition. Yeah, no, I, I don't disagree with your reading of the definition. Um, you know, one thing, um, and I should say, I. I At the same time, you know, this is clearly intended in some ways to denote a primary yard that is located between the street and the nearest line of principal building on the lot. Um, you know, it, it's the idea that it has a, it is the frontage, the primary entrance. Um, but the way this is defined, you know, I don't think there's wiggle room for us um, 
to declare one to be the front yard and the other a side yard because it is a corner lot. Yeah. I'll add to that that the way uh, the fences and walls are drafted, that there is no um, exception for the front yard four and a half foot yeah. fence um, under 3101D. You know, it says fences or walls located within a front yard shall not exceed a height of four and a half feet, and the applicant shall demonstrate that the fence will not interfere with line of sight of pedestrians, bicycles, or vehicles in the right of way. It's 3101E for side and rear yard that says they can go higher if there are certain uh, conditions that uh, allow or require the, the the height to be a little bit higher. Yeah. Um, and so I don't read 3101D as allowing those same analyses to apply. Um, about allowing any waiver? No, no, but just as, so I read, I read 301, 3101E yeah. as creating its own, so if you read 301, 101E, it says that it shall be six feet except one where higher fence is approved by the DRB or required under these regulations for buffer screening or security purposes. Right, that's mm. not where I got the waiver allowance. Yeah, no, 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 okay. I'm not talking about the waiver. Okay, so Great. I'm just saying that, that in and of itself, it has its own mm -hmm. uh, standards to allow that. And so we're not talking about that. So that does mm -hmm. force us to go then. And the fact that the Planning Commission included specific authorization for the DRB to raise the height of fences in a side yard. Side or rear, certainly yeah. certainly indicates that they did not intend that we have that discretion regard to a front yard beyond the general waiver that we're allowed, which is 10% of any of the dimensional standards within the regulations, which clearly this is a dimensional standard, and so our general waiver authority is mm -hmm. available, but, but again, very clearly capped at 10%, so yeah. I think the only way we get above that is through a, a variance, and I think as the staff report that sets out, there's, I don't think uh, anybody could say that this would... Uh, prohibit your beneficial use of the property if you were limited to a five-foot fence as opposed to a six-foot fence. Mm. Does it make any difference that the design started before any of these zoning regulations came into play? It does not. Okay. The mat what matters is the date on which the application was filed. Okay. So yeah. that's the triggering point. Yeah. And does it make any difference that I was the one that came before the zoning board in 2017 to change the fence regulations? <laughs> and it was this property. <laughs> I worked with Sarah McShane on it. <laughs> it doesn't. It came back to bite me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is a really poorly what, structured what, regulation. What's so. interesting, too, and this... Oh, yeah, it is. Um, what... Um, <laughs> One thing that West and I talked about, because uh, aesthetics are mm -hmm. ultimately what we would like to be considered, um, there are ways around it which aren't as great as this. Um, the trellising, and so a trellis could go up to 10 feet, and that could be, I don't think there's a setback from what I read, that it could be right up against the fence. So you'd build a fence and then lean a trellis and have a, You could inside. have a 10-foot trellis, but it just wouldn't be as aesthetically pleasing. Um, and then the other catch, if, if it's rhetoric, was that this fence was already designed to hold vegetation. And I think, at least in my line of work, the only the difference between a fence and a trellis is a trellis holds vegetation. And there were already vines designed in it, um, already parts of the fence that he custom designed to hold vines. And so I could argue if we planted a vine such that it was covered in vines, it would be one big trellis, not one big fence. Kind of rhetoric. But I, and again, that's just me picking it apart. That's not to say that we would do that. That would be ridiculous and it would look silly. Um, but I do think that this option looks better than some of the things, the creative solutions that we've already talked about of what we do to figure out how to block the sight lines. Um, and I wonder, too, about that latticing, the interrupted view on the front, if that, I mean, it's latticing, so if that's, you know, you could discount that as part of the fence, even though it's connected. These are just little details that I'm, so I don't know if it makes a difference, but we've talked about it. Mm -hmm. 
So it's 12 inches of latticing, which takes it down to five feet of privacy fencing. Those five feet will be holding vegetation year round. There will be vines that stay woody. So could you count that as trellising in those places? I'd probably be disinclined to do that because the function is so explicitly fencing and mm. I, 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 I chewed yeah. on it before this meeting and I looked up trellis yeah. <laughs> and I looked for pictures and a framework or light wooden, light wooden or metal base uh, yeah. bars chiefly used as a support for fruit trees or climbing plants. I really think it is intended as something different. And there's a spot in the regulations that talks about things that apply to fences versus things that apply to Ellis, uh, trellises, arbors, and pergolas. Yeah. And the fact that those are separated makes me think we're supposed to think of them as different functions. Different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Middlebury Fence Company is installing it. <laughs> don't really install trellises as much. I mean, that's also, I think, at the end of the day, what we're here to to review is a fence application. Sure. If we ultimately say, you know, something less than six feet, what you do from that with your interpretation of the regulations is up to you. If you yeah. believe you want to, if there's, le you know, leniency around trellises, we, I don't, I don't think we can offer an opinion on that because really all we're asked today is, will we approve a six foot tall fence? Oh, sure. So, but it's good to think yeah. through what your, what the options might be. Yeah, and and really we have played around with different options, That's very and the clear whole reason why we went through this process was this is the most attractive. Yeah. Just have a question about um, so we're just talking about the height. <clears throat> Ordinarily, if this was a proposed to be a four and a half foot tall fence, you would make a determination that the sight lines were not adversely impacted under three o. 3101D. Um, and if it was a four and a half, uh, now I'm just like, what I, if it was four and a half feet tall, am I even looking at the sight lines? Um, yeah. I mean, that's what I, for, for me, if this were four and a half feet tall, I would do what I did here, which is go to the Department of Public Works and get their opinion on the sight lines. Mm -hmm. And they are comfortable with the sight lines. Um, you know, they're the, in, in, from my world, they're the experts on that. Um, and because they didn't have any concerns, I would have checked off on that. And it would have been administratively approved if it was four and a half feet tall. All right. Seems yeah. like we might have to decide tonight whether sight lines would be impacted. I mean, clear. ultimately, you need to decide that now because yeah. the whole thing comes to you. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But. Mm -hmm. So, I think that's right, Rob, is that. The way the the ordinance is written, you have a limitation on four and a half feet, and you have the obligation to, so that even if a four and a half foot fence was proposed, but it created some type of line of sight for pedestrians, bicycles, or vehicles um, in the right of way, mm -hmm. that would cause us not to grant the permit for even a four and a half foot fence. Mm -hmm. um, and so if I'm understanding this interfere with the line of sight for pedestrians, bicycles, or vehicles, this is really something where does someone stopping at the intersection or turning at the intersection, is their sight line affected by? Or people walking. Or walking, people walking. And then having to look around the corner to see if somebody's coming the other way. Uh -huh. And I think we received a determination from the Department of Public Works that even for the six foot proposal, sight lines would not be adversely impacted. So, right. okay. I, I didn't see that, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's at yeah. the very back, it's an email from Kurt. Ah, last page. It's it also in the staff report on page six. Ah, right. Thank you. It's not right in there. And on the corner, um, the fence actually goes back eight feet from the corner so that it, there's plenty of room for sight lines. And yeah, there you stepped it down five feet and as well. And it's down, Perfect. yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. As far as the kind of aesthetic cues that the Vine Street entrance, it's still, even if it were five feet instead of six feet, you'd still propose uh, the difference in fencing, the kind of only obstructed view on Vine Street, and still four feet. So. Would that still provide those cues, even if the fence was capped at five feet along Elm Street? Um, 
it it would to a certain extent, but um, again, the sight line from Birch Grove in, it's amazing what six inches even can do. Um, and the traffic and the dust, those th it was those things that really, they felt like four and a half wasn't enough protection. The, the space between the sunroom area and the edge of the sidewalk is roughly 22 feet, 23 feet. Um, and then when you take into account, you know, not planting things right up against buildings and having a walkway, it really is a tighter space. And so I think that too was why I talked West out of the vegetative hedge and to get in a fence because it would just, and without even going the whole way up to the sidewalk, having that setback, but to help maximize that front area just because space was pretty tight. Yeah, and they, Okay, if I ask a question. Okay. So, with if you had a hedge there instead of a fence, mm. um, what would be the impact on um, actual use of the sunroom? I mean, if you're talking you yeah. know, six foot high hedge, you, you know, you're not going to get that lattice work at the top to let in light necessarily right. in the summer or the winter. Is that the sun might not have as much of an effect. It's more of how that public to private um, transition space would be. And people walking by, I think people are just naturally curious and want to see. That's why we left like the latticing in the top of the fence was so you could have these peaks in. Because what they're designing in their backyard is incredible. It's, be it's going to be really beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so I think they want people to have these little peaks in while not opening it up you know, fully for people to feel like they can just kind of reach a hand over or <laughs> walk in. <laughs> Not so welcoming, but it's like, yes, come. Um, so they were really conscious about that. I think the main problem with hedges um, is the upkeep, yeah. the maintenance. I know the tree board was pruning that hedge years ago <laughs> on that same property. Um, deer we saw this year that the deer pressure is unreal and so I think we have to reassess and this goes further into policy but reassess using vegetative hedges I think we have a lot of factors coming in with pests and diseases that are really unusual and they're happening faster every year mm -hmm. um, so I did talk him out of that that um, but we're still using vegetation intentionally in different areas so that you get these little views in but then there's these blocks of privacy yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So, do we all agree that we're talking about a 10% waiver um, under 3002J? That, um, well, th this is, I mean, it's an interesting question because I think the I think the applicant needs to agree that that's what they the applicant is seeking. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If the applicant's if the application is we'd like a six foot fence, and I think we're in agreement that we don't have any discretion to grant a six foot fence under the regulations, right? Unless we want to toss them out the window and fly. but I again, and we've done that and to be clear. <laughs> there have been other provisions that where we've gone beyond that ten percent. Uh, but there have been strongly compelling reasons to do so. Sure. What I'm hearing you say is that uh, the higher the better. You know, we're trying to not, not, to, but, but every inch helps in minimizing the impacts of noise, dust, and views from birch grove. Um, Below six feet. To be clear, we would not have sure. gone above six even if there was an eight foot high maximum. Yeah. Yeah, it wouldn't fit. But between right. anything above inches above four and a half, maxed out at six. Yeah. Help. That's it. Um, but I don't. I don't know that that, for me personally, is as compelling a reason to, mm -hmm. to deviate so clearly from the yeah. regulations. Again, and th those other situations too. I mean, I think it is important the fact that the regulations do say, "Hey, DRB, look at side yards. You can go bigger." And do, don't say that for front yards. I think right. it's, mm -hmm. it indicates a conscious choice on behalf of the planning commission to say we do not want the DRB having the authority to, you know, go beyond that. Mm -hmm. And so I don't, I, 
I'd be very hesitant to, to do that. But so back to my point is I think if the, if the application is we would like a six foot fence, I don't think we can say, well, we'll give you a five foot fence. Um, I think we say either yes or no, you can have a six foot fence unless the applicant here is saying, mm. reading the tea leaves, we'd like a five foot fence. <laughs> and then at that point, I would be happy. Well, I mean, I understood our review to be conducted in part and testimony in part to be geared towards the idea of a waiver. Um, you know, they're, they're asking for a six foot fence but they have filled out the waiver or variance okay. application. So I guess that's probably sufficient. Then I, don't know. I just wanted to flag it to make sure that we're not going beyond our role of reviewing what's before us and I, I getting think, into designing a project. I mean, at least the way our you know waiver and variance forms are developed and the way an application like this reads out, you know, they're they're applying for a zoning permit for a six-foot fence and then recognizing that they would need a variant. Actually, it's not a, uh, a waiver. You're asking for a variance. If I'm, now that I look a little closer. Um, I've analyzed it under both. But the analysis is gone and the testimony is gone under both. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and the way the form reads is it's, it's very similar you know, a variance just carries additional elements so that if you analyze it under a variance, you also get most of the waiver categories. Um, so I don't think we're beyond what's permissible given the posture of the application. Um, Can I ask one quick question? It was about um, the term hardship and how it was stated for the applicant. but. I, going back to the public, people sitting at Birch Grove looking in, is it um, considered a hardship on them to s look directly into someone's private area and have that be something that maybe should be avoided for the sake of the commercial business? No. No. <laughs> no. That's an Deal interesting that. question. Wear your underwear. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was, um, there, was a, there was a note in here, uh, previous application for a porch, and I believe there was a waiver that was granted that exceeded the stated allowance. And I think it's worth maybe just considering that application and some of the um, kind of decision making that went into that and how that would potentially apply to a situation like this, just to make sure that the, the decisions we're making are kind of in alignment. Um, sure. Are you talking about the North Franklin Street or the Franklin yes. Street application? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, the difference in the North Franklin Street application was one we were dealing with a different set of ordinances. So as Ryan pointed out, we didn't have clear language that was uh, allowing for certain waivers on one side and not allowing it on others. We didn't have that clear policy statement from the, the um, Planning Commission in the drafting of this ordinance. The second was you had clear evidence that this was a house that was largely situated um, by accident of its design and the width of the right of way in an area where the variance or the ordinance, the waiver was rendered somewhat meaningless because of just the function of this, this extensive right of way, notwithstanding the fact that, you know, if you measured from the sidewalk and yard, it, it would, it, it would be nor, it would have had a, a deeper porch allowed. And, and third, I think on top of all that, you also had clear evidence that every other house up and down this road was well within this right of way. And then fourth, you had uh, DPW also saying, we don't have a problem with this whatsoever. It doesn't affect any of the city held rights uh, of way. So, you know, given that those pieces of evidence, um, you know, I think those are all distinguishable than the situation here, except of course the DPW has signed off and says, said we're okay with that. But, you know, here you have a stat, you have an ordinance that has stated some policy 
um, about what's allowed for for extensions um, and granting some to side and rear, but n very specifically not to front. Um, you you don't have evidence that this is a common problem up and down the street. In fact, you know the testimony is notwithstanding the fact that you know there's a lot of secondary uh, entrances. A lot of these fronts on along Elm Street have been preserved. Um, and then, you know, you don't have this sort of but-for situation of the funkiness of the lot. This is just a corner lot mm. problem. So I think all, all of those distinguish mm. and are probably what, what are leading at least me and others to right. say. Those differences between these two it's situations. It's not a compelling, it's not mm. the compelling case that the Franklin Street was that the variant, the, um, sorry, the waiver was, you know, otherwise rendered meaningless if we didn't extend it. Slightly. And I think to the point of privacy, I mean, the whole idea of a front yard is that it's, you know, you're going to have views from a front frontage into mm -hmm. a residence, um, yeah. especially when the maximum height that you're allowed to have a fence is only four and a half feet. I mean, I think that we have to assume yeah. that that was taken into an account. And yeah. the fact that there's a very popular bakery with absolutely delicious baked goods <laughs> across the street, I mean, that's part yeah. of downtown Montpelier. Um, it is. So I don't, and there's certainly, there aren't any other six foot fences along the frontage of Elm yeah. Street. And They're all rentals though. That's yeah. the thing that um, I don't get called in on rental properties very often because people don't invest mm -hmm. into landscapes. Sure. And so that's the big difference that this is a unique area or a unique property in that they're investing in their landscape and you look all along the street and it truly is a lot of rentals mm -hmm. yeah. that haven't been. So it's... You know, it's unique in that sense. But, you know, notwithstanding my earlier editorializing, I mean, the, the Planning Commission has said we want, we want clear mm. views and sight lines along the front of properties. Yeah. And we want that to extend along the front, not just front, right. but one front. But if it's a corner lot, along the, yeah. the, the total frontage. So, I mean, right. you know, if we had a different set of, you know, this is this is where, you know, the, the language of the, the bylaws do matter. If we yeah. had different language, if we had, you know, some of these, com these elements, we could certainly weigh those. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're sort of talking about an extreme situation that was off, what I would consider sort of off the norm with that Franklin Street property, but here we, we have a pretty clear decision by the Planning Commission to make that. Sure. Um, and so, you know, you can argue and you can say, well, that's a good idea or a bad idea. Oh, yeah. But at the end of the day, it is what the, they've adopted. And yeah. so for us to impose or put a thumb on the scale on mm -hmm. this in this respect goes against not just sort of, well, this is probably a gray area, but the clear intent. I mean, mm. it's, it's, not a, it's not a gray area. Yeah. You know, you can argue that it would make sense, that it would yeah. make a beautiful project. I mean, clearly a lot of time and effort has gone into it, but it is, right. uh, you know, we're, we're left with a bylaw that, sure. that doesn't, you know, that, that talks about side and rear, you mm -hmm. know, having more, but very yeah. clearly leaving front to be left low. Yeah, what's, I think, just stepping back at the bigger picture, what's a bummer is, that you have these properties adjacent in this property too that had unruly, way bigger, way thicker um, privacy hedges. Mm -hmm. And they have removed that with the intent of doing something better and more beautiful. And to have that um, disapproved of is kind of like, wow, we should have just left the hedge. It's, it, 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 it's not a motivation to other people to do this which is kind of a bummer. I mean, you see that burning bush hedge that's two doors down, and it's mm -hmm. huge, mm -hmm. and it's an invasive species that right. is, you know, doing all these bad things, and they might say, well, we shouldn't take it down because well, then we only get four and a half feet. Why would we do that? Right. You know, and four instead... And fencing. I mean, that's part of it, too. Fencing. So we're stuck with the regulations that we're stuck with. Oh, yeah. It's like, I totally but, get but it. But I think, you know, to the extent that there's no limits on the size of plantings that you want to plant or hedges, then... Yeah. You're, well, you're left with those options. I mean, I don't, but and and at the end of the day, it's right. the regulations have said if you're going to have a fence as opposed to vegetation yeah. or trellis or lattice or whatever else, if you're going to yeah. have a fence in your front yard, it's, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's only up to four and a half feet. And then we also have this general provision we're allowed to 
extend yeah. dimensional things 10 percent but that's i mean yeah. we can't there's I, no, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. I do. It and, just, you know, and it's I think your the argument, bigger picture. I, sure. I think that is, you know, and, and the vice chair does not like it when I say this, but <laughs> um, when, you know, that's a great argument to make to the planning commission about this this bylaw because here's a, two years ago. <laughs> here's a situation where you know and if they vote yeah I mean if it was made and and they didn't accept it then clearly they felt other compelling reasons controlled but you know that's that's the board that can really make those type of changes we mm -hmm. we can't impose those I mean what we're our flexibility comes where you know there's a clear intent by a, a an ordinance that's not met by a particular factual circumstance mm. as opposed to here where the intent is crystal clear and it just you know, doesn't make sense in <laughs> it, it, it doesn't well make or sense. it makes it I mean, it, it does, does with the site I mean if, if you analyze the property it does make sense mm -hmm. I totally sure. get why rules exist yeah I see landscaping companies not following rules all the time and it drives me bananas that. <laughs> so that. yeah. as one of the landscaping companies that's trying to do the right thing mm -hmm. I do see the the you have to have rules you have to and it does it I mean all of the rules that I've used and followed I feel like yes they're there for that reason this property happens to be one that I 18 inches it's 18 inches yeah. <laughs> and mm -hmm. it does make a difference <laughs> and it, I get it though yeah that I'm when not, you I, don't have the space to budge but yeah. I'm not unsympathetic to your uh no, thanks. Please. Um, <laughs> You've made it well, and your designs are very thoughtful. No, that's okay. And we have creative solutions around it. So um, it was just to present it and to say, I hope that if things like this come up, that you know you do hear people out because mm -hmm. smart design is really important, and a lot of people don't do it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people skip a lot of steps. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that you're hearing us out at least is nice. Yeah. No, yeah, and if there were, I mean, you know, solutions. again, we're, you know, Unfortunately, we're bound to this, but yeah, we, yeah. you know, we we are a quasi adjudicative board in the sense that, you know, we're not a formal court, um, <laughs> and we can hear these things to the greatest extent possible and try and and we are empowered to implement the purposes of these to the extent that we can to get the, at the sense of it, but you know, a case like this where there's a policy decision that was made that's mm -hmm. baked in like this, unfortunately, that yeah. that ties our hands as to what direction. And okay. and we can't, we have to be careful. Um, and so that said, is this, would you want us to go forward with a variance, or sorry, we should, so yeah. essentially there's, there's two choices. There's a, a waiver and a variance, and I think the board's sort of, uh, weather report was that a variance is probably unlikely because okay. they're designed not to be granted they're really for absolute hardships where you know you have the undersized parcel and you can't otherwise do mm. what you would be allow, allowed to do um, without this little adjustment um, yeah. so that that would put us in the land of waiver and mm. waiver is great because its standards are much lower um, and as you can see, you know, from the application, it really talks about that it does not alter the essential character of the neighborhood uh, or district in which a property is located substantially or permanently impair the lawful use or development of the adjacent property, reduce access to renewable energy resources, or be detrimental to public welfare. And then um, that the pro proposed land development is beneficial or necessary for the continued reasonable use of property. Those are the standards. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, but it comes with this cap of we can only go 10% up. So basically taking it from four and a half feet to six feet. I mean, sorry, five feet. We'll take it if it's yeah, six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll take it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wishful thinking. Um, Keep but, in mind. 10% uh, and then 10 you know, we can, waivers we would have to grant. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Could I come back and apply again? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Get another, <laughs> another waiver oh, for right, the cap waiver on a to waiver. it. Yeah, no. <laughs> Um, That's like uh, Achilles and the tortoise. Uh, <laughs> you'd eventually, you'd never get to a finish line. Um, <laughs> That's right. It would be infinite. One of Zeno's paradoxes. Well, I think yeah. would. Um, <laughs> so that said, I mean, we can go that direction. Um, we can also go further discussion on the variance if you feel that. That's no, I think you've made your case that it, 
Yeah, it sounds well, like it's... we don't have to make the case, <laughs> but, but if... <laughs> You've laid it out for me, and I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah. it isn't optimistic, yeah. but... but um, <laughs> We've barred that I, entrance or made it less uh, inviting <laughs> as a primary. Welcoming. It's right. less welcoming. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Secondary entrance. Um, I'd have to talk to West and see if he wanted, and Allison, to see if they wanted to do a waiver. Um, they, we do have some backup plans, so I could see if they wanted to skip that and just go with a four and a half foot high fence, but then, you know, have, we did talk about berms and trellising and arbors, and so. Well, that's an interesting things. question. Cause to create a 18 inch berm that then has a six foot fence on it, or has a four and a half foot <laughs> fence on it. <laughs> yes, we have <laughs> talked about it. Don't give away, <laughs> don't give away. How do you measure We've already talked about it. <laughs> yeah, that is, that, is a, that is language that is silent. Uh -huh. um, yeah. So. Yeah. That Again, raises an interesting question. Um, we have talked about that. So what I would suggest is one, one way we can do this, if you feel you've sort of exceeded your authority. <laughs> I um, don't have authority. <laughs> to go any further uh, yeah. from your client, we can continue this for two weeks. What's our next yeah. meeting look like? Mm. Uh, the next meeting depending on what happens between now and 11 o'clock tomorrow morning, could be pretty full. Okay. Well, what I'll say is if we approve a, a waiver up to 10% and authorize you to build a five-foot fence, you could still build a four-foot fence. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. If, if mm -hmm. the, the five-foot fence, the waiver for the five-foot fence would probably be pretty limited to this particular design and just shrinking it down to five feet. Yeah. I, if you came back with a very different design, mm -hmm. it would probably have to be limited to the four and a half feet. Right. Um, if I was going to approve that administratively. Right. But you would have the approval of a five foot fence under this application, but okay. a different design, it would probably be a separate application. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, or, so you have some options. Yeah, or the that makes sense. Go ahead. Just to be really clear and make sure we all, all agree on this, even if you came back with a different design, that five foot would probably remain the upper limit. So it really, you, you I, think I think even we, with a different design, the five foot would remain the upper limit. Right. I wouldn't, mm, because our variance, or our waiver authority is 10%, regardless of the design. Right. I'm just saying if she changed the design, if the design is so changed so dramatically that it's like a different application where I have to get new Department of Public Works review, yes. isn't that really a new application that they have to get a new waiver on? Sure. But yes, we're but if it's a app if it's an application for a five yeah, and a half yes, foot. Okay, you're just saying oh, yeah. they still have to come and yeah. get. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry. Yeah. Did I say five foot? I'm just saying. I think so. Yeah. I think it, we're, we're just saying it's five yeah. foot no matter what. It's, that yeah. I'm just letting. Yeah. Yes, that makes sense. We get transparent, Although but that, it's, it's not the design. Yeah. I mean, that said, I'm, I'm, and I'm only one board member, but I think, you know, the compelling reasons for the waiver, you know, apart from a radical design to this, but another thoughtful plan, there's nothing I see on this site that would not, that would prevent at least the board from considering this another design in in the same way under the waiver criteria. Right. In, the, in other words, yeah, it's not the fence itself that's, but we would have to right. conduct that review. Sure. Um, you know, this is also a question of, um, yeah, uh, y y you have a number of different things. I mean, we can continue this, which is, what's nice about that is you don't have to necessarily reapply or rewarn or, mm -hmm. you know, it just is continued to a date certain. Um, and maybe it's not two weeks, maybe it's a month from now. Mm -hmm. um, and during that time, you consider your options and if you need to make modifications, clarifications. And obviously, if, if it's a four and a half foot fence, then you don't need us, um, yeah. by and large. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, that, those are your, your options. And of course, if you go forward, get the five foot waiver, you know, for this particular fence design it, as a sort of shrunk down version of reducing, you know, 12 inches at various points. Yeah. Um, that's, that's another application. I mean, that's, that's a permit that you're largely not, I wouldn't say stuck with, but it is the permit. Sure. You couldn't then radically redesign a fence and use that permit for that. But that can be granted right now that that's something well, we would decide on it and then issue a written decision. Okay. Yeah. So you're probably. But at this 
juncture, so I don't have to come back and with a 10%. Right, you wouldn't, no, you okay. wouldn't have to come back ever again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question, is, okay. is, this, is this property in the floodplain? It is, it is not in the floodplain. It is outside of, it's in the historic district, which it wasn't in 2017. Oh. It was redistrict. It's right. in the historic district, but not the design review district. So I'm yes, uh, thinking it. creatively, and yeah. guess going back to a, a, a kind of a question that I, I'd thrown out there um, about h how do you measure the height of a fence? Mm. Right. It so is, yeah. um, I don't well, think it actually says it in 3101. Uh, so I yeah. think I would go with the height um, provision at 3002H, um, which generally they're talking about. Um, measuring height from, sh yeah, it actually says structure. So um, height shall be measured as the vertical distance from the highest point of the structure to the average of the highest and lowest points, and it says where the exterior wall meets the finished grade. Yeah. For the fence, I think you would just say where the fence meets the finished grade versus an exterior wall. Because so it's all about height a, of a structure, and you, a fence is a structure. If you had a fence that did not was not resting on the ground, and the bottom of the fence was a foot above the ground. Mm, I think, Where no, because you, well, you still support posts. I, I, I'm going to cut this decision, okay. I mean, this uh, discussion a little <laughs> off, only because we're uh, liable to go into hypothetical land. <laughs> true, true. Um, but I think, you know, I think Meredith points in uh, a helpful direction with the 3002H, and um, you know, that's certainly a discussion that is probably best done in the specific because there's all kinds of wild and crazy ideas <laughs> that can spin. Yeah, you you um, can come gone down through to the a planning lot. office. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, it, so I don't want to necessarily go on record as a board to answer a question we haven't been asked in a formal way. Um, Fair enough. So, yeah. that that said, um, it's really in your court how you want us to proceed. I think it makes sense to get the waiver. Okay. No matter what. And if West and Allison decide to do the four and a half foot fence, um, or lower than the almost five. five feet. Yeah. Yeah. Be careful. Stay right under five. 59.4. <laughs> 59.4. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. 7 seconds or something. It's yeah. something ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> then we'll go from there. Okay, yeah. so what is, does the board have any other questions about the waiver? I mean, I think there's been some compelling testimony as far as the criteria, and I'll just run through it for the purposes of the hearing. Uh, the variance of authorized shall not alter the essential character of the neighborhood or district in which the property is located. What? We're doing waiver, right? Waiver, okay, yeah. Sorry, you just said variance. Sorry, I keep saying both of those things wrong. Actually, you know what it says? It, it's because it says the variance right here on the piece of paper in front of me. The waiver, if authorized, shall not alter the essential character of the neighborhood or district in which the property is located. I think we can all agree that this is not going to change the residential slash slightly commercial uh, mixed-use neighborhood uh, by putting up a slightly higher fence. Um, substantially or permanently impair the lawful use or development of the adjacent, adjacent property. This fence lies along the right of way. There's really, you know, this isn't going to affect the Meadow Mart's ability to use their property. Um, and the other portions of the fence really touch the public right of way, which the Department of Public Works says they have no objections or issues with. Um, reduce access to renewable energy resources. This isn't going to affect the installation of solar panels on the house if they show so desire or um, a wind turbine um. and i'd like to acknowledge that more passively this um still allows for solar gain through mm -hmm. the windows that are constructed which is another type of renewable energy for warmth mm -hmm. Uh, or be detrimental to the public welfare. Again, this doesn't seem that we have any type of issue with that. Um, so, and then the other criteria being uh, the proposed land development is beneficial or necessary for the continued reasonable use of the property. I think there's been um, 
an excessive amount of testimony showing that this will be beneficial to the property. It's an improvement. It does remove an invasive hedge and replace it with something that's more permanent, slightly, um, and perhaps easier to maintain over the long run. Yeah, that's true. Does that make sense for everyone? So I will entertain a motion. Considering all those factors, I will make a motion that we approve a 10% waiver of the four and a half foot maximum height requirement for the front yard at 260 Elm Street along the Elm Street Road frontage for the fence design as proposed in the application. Okay. Motion by Ryan. Do I have a second? Second that. Second by Rob. Uh, just a quick question. Sure. Discussion. Discussion. Uh, do we need to include the DPW um, spacing about our request about plantings along Elm and Vine Street, or is that just incorporated as? I think well, they were suggesting that that they just it was kind of a word word of caution to the applicant okay. to ensure that snow and as the plantings themselves are not. Versus, uh, but not need to put it as a. I don't think so, no. Sure yep, but thank you. Okay, perfect. Thank yeah, you. I think that's right. So finding. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. All right, you have your Thanks. waiver. Ten okay. percent. Sorry, um, yeah, sorry, we couldn't yeah. go further. Yeah. No, you're so, not. Of course. I am <laughs> sorry. Kidding. I wish I do. I mean, I think you made some compelling points. No, it would have been. Good. I Wait. would have at least liked to have been able to debate in more detail with Kate about <laughs> and consider more fully. But I just don't think we have. You uh, have to retire to the three penny for that uh, yeah. policy <laughs> discussion. Um, yeah. All right. Well, there will be an issue, written decision issued okay. um, in the next, depending on merit, the as schedule. Soon as I can. As soon as she can. Thanks. So, um, that's thank you all, all for taking the time. I know that you know this is thank a you, lot sir. of work, and uh, I appreciate it. It's a lot of work for you. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Yep. Thanks for it's a good fight. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. All right. Thanks. Our other business uh, next meeting is uh, Monday, October seventh, two thousand. I was just going to say for anybody listening, it's three weeks from now, not two weeks. Right. Um, because we have that final week in September. Uh, so our next meeting is October 7th, 2019, 7 p.m. That's a Monday. Any other business? Hearing none, I'll take a motion to adjourn. A motion to adjourn. Motion by Rob. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Second by Claire. <laughs> I knew we would get it. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. We are adjourned. Thank you very much.